Oh, Final Fantasy Adventure is another game you might enjoy if you like Crystallis. I thought I had thought of all the ones I'd played? Apparently not, and I'm sure there are more. I know there are more. So, Final Fantasy Adventure, another top-down action RPG. You kill an enemy, you get some gold. You kill an enemy, you get some XP. It's the way it works. As I recall, it's been a long time since I've played the game, but as I recall, you can also blow up walls with at least one or two of your weapons, like in Crystallis. And I think there's also some magic, so you might enjoy it. It's worth a look. Yes, this maze... We're sort of through with mazes at this point in the game. I mean... <sighs> The whole, the previous Pyramid Labyrinth was suitable, and then this, it's okay to have a little bit more Labyrinth, but we've seen a lot of level design like this, the sort of grid-like pattern, whoa, best to avoid those, turn you into a little slimy blobby goo, and then you need to turn yourself back, well, you don't need to, but, you know, assuming you don't want to die, turn yourself back with the Fruit of Repun. Leather boots? Leather boots I get. Gingerly walking through the Pokey Spikes? That's okay, keep you safe, I get that. Now on the other hand... Rabbit boots? Jumping? Onto pointy pokey spikes? I don't know if that's such a good idea. I've played Prince of Persia, I've played Tomb Raider. Jumping into pits of spikes does not end well! But our hero is different, I guess. Yeah, the, the whole layout of the long hallways filled... Ow, ow, ow! Long hallways filled with spikes the grid-like pattern here, and these enemies were actually in the last pyramid as well, so... I don't know. It's, it's fairly similar. But that's okay, we're just about to go into some different level architecture, some drastically different level architecture. And this is fun to fly over. Just throw on the flight spell. Don't know why I didn't do it there. I guess I didn't really need to. Uh, the NES version, it's a little more hectic there. You got one or two guys waiting on the other side, on either side. So it's best just to fly over them. Okay, Bow of Truth, and we're off to fight the big boss. Where is the Emperor? What happened? Um, this looks like it could be the Floating Tower, but this is definitely not in the NES game. Um... And aside from that, in the NES game, when you go to the floating tower, there's this big giant crystal, and you step into it, and whoop, then you teleport to the tower. I walk through a doorway. I would be surprised, too, if I went to walk into my kitchen, step through the doorway, and ended up in Disneyland. This is a surprise. And having only played this game once before, I don't actually remember uh, what's supposed to happen. So at this point, I'm just assuming this is a glitch. I'm playing this on an emulator. I did have one or two major glitches before, so wouldn't surprise me if this is just the game playing out of order. Because I triggered something weird. Um, because I do remember this section, but I don't remember it happening right after a doorway. Weird. From the pyramid, anyhow. But this is cool. I like this. One of, one of the biggest problems, I love the original Crystallis. But I have a couple problems with it, and one of the biggest ones is that the end game isn't really much of an end game. You show up on the floating tower, and it's a grind fest as robots come out of everywhere, and you just fight all of them. And then you you get some plot, you get some story, you unlock different levels of the tower, and then you go up and fight a kind of ho-hum. Well, not ho-hum visually. There's a lot going on. It's exciting, but not very difficult final boss. This is different. I like that there's a little bit of a maze. It's a simple maze, and it's kind of asymmetrical, and there's lots of little details and enemies running around to fight, and that's cool. I like that. That's a little bit different. Uh, and still grinding works at, in this version of the game, because in the NES version, hey there! You're, you have to be, like, level 16, max level, to be able to physically damage the penultimate boss. So by the time you get to the floating tower, you're already maxed out. You have no more need for gold, no more need for experience points. You can't even collect experience points. So, masses of enemies descending on you? Eh, not so exciting. Here it's okay. But they're not doing that here. They're just throwing me into more mazes. I don't know. I like the idea. But a little bit of a different execution, I think would be good. Okay, so... I'm assuming that, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, okay, I've definitely done something wrong because I am now at the final boss, completely having bypassed the section where you were outside running around the edge of the floating tower. This can't be right, so I'm just not taking this battle seriously. I mean, I am, I'm trying to stay alive, but... I mean, really? If I were taking this seriously, I'd be using Sword of Water, Sword of Thunder. I mean, that's how you short out a giant machine heart pumping in the wall, right? Not just burn it with fire. Although I guess burning things with fire generally is effective. See? Not such a problem, especially when you throw up your barrier. Uh, uh? Oh. Okay, uh, maybe this is not a glitch. Maybe this is actually how the game's supposed to go. Huh. Cool. Hmm, digitized voices. Okay. Also a good idea... Now we're back to the part of the game that I recognize. Also a good idea to give you more than five seconds to use the titular sword! Yay, Crystallis! And to be able to charge it up three levels and have it do different stuff. This is great! This is a really good idea that the Game Boy Color version introduces! Unfortunately, this level design now is problematic because it's another labyrinth. This would have been a great time to have exactly the same layout of the tower as it is in the NES version, just enemies piling out of everywhere and blowing them all up with Crystallis. That would be great. But that's not the case. It's not a matter of defeat all of the enemies and move on to the next section. It's find the right doorway and keep finding the right doorway. Which is not really the way the rest of the game has gone. For as good as this version of the game is, as... Uh, at, I lost my syntax there, sorry. Uh, this version of the game is really good at beating you over the head with all of the information that you could possibly need to beat the game. And then you get to the very end, and they don't tell you that going through the wrong doorway will take you back to the beginning, or possibly, I, I haven't looked at this closely enough, either take you back to the beginning or just throw you out at some random doorway. There is a pattern, there is a secret, and normally I would be fast-forwarding through this section because it's just me wandering around the same area over and over again, but as this is, at the time of my recording, possibly the only playthrough of this game on the entire internet, I think it's valuable for you to suffer with me as I'm figuring this out because obviously I'm, I'm walking blindly. Yeah, so two problems. Game doesn't tell you and doesn't make it clear that each of these doorways really is sending you back. Like, there's no clear starting point that you keep getting sent back to because enough of the architecture, it's good, it's cool to look at, but enough of it's just similar enough that you can't really tell if it's the same place you've come from before or gone into before. And... The other problem is that it's inconsistent with itself as to uh, where you can actually go through, which we'll see in a little bit. Yeah, so super happy, though, that I do have fully powered Crystallis and can run around beating stuff up with it. What's unfortunate, though, is that it's... I remember the charged projectile in the NES version being larger. Maybe it's got the same hitbox, but I remember it being larger. So all of these, all of these magic points used, and it's really easy to miss your target, and it doesn't even go kerblam. It's just sort of like, you know, level two sword of water. Just looks different. Maybe a little more powerful. Meh. The ideal here would first of all have different music. That would be ideal. Second of all remember where I am in my train of thought. Third of all, what would be really awesome would be to truly synthesize the ideas introduced here and what was in place in the NES game. To have you show up on this level of the tower first, go through one of the doors, and then that's a labyrinth. And then you wander around the labyrinth, and then you come out onto the next level, 
and then it's a level just like this. Fight a bunch of enemies to unlock the staircase to the next level, fight a couple more enemies, and then meet up, combine your swords, and then go off to beat the final boss. Having, of course, little plot revelations along the way, though for this game they've pretty much given it all to you. There's really no more secrets to share. <sighs> that would be ideal, I think. See, this, this game does have a lot of good ideas, it's just the execution of them sometimes, or the fact that implementing the new ideas takes away something from the NES version. Okay. Th this actually is getting... Have you figured out the pattern yet? Have you, without looking at a walkthrough, figured out what it is that I need to do here? Obviously, walk through the doors, but have you figured out specifically which doors? Is there a rhyme and reason to it? Or is it completely random? Or is there something else that I need to accomplish? Have you figured it out? Because at this point, I haven't, and I go wandering for another two or three minutes yet before resorting to a walkthrough. So, I think, actually, instead of fast-forwarding, I'll just fade out, because you don't need to see this all in super speed. Fade! Okay, now we're gonna do this right. We're going to go through the correct doorways. Can you tell what they are? I will point it out to you. Walkity, 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 walk! Walkity walk, walkity walk. This hallway is just too long. See the pillars? Watch the pillars. Yeah, the other problem, I, I would be okay with the sort of, you know, the Scooby-Doo doors walking through one and then showing up on the other side of the hallway and going back and forth and ending up in the same place. I would be okay with that. Except, there are way too many doors in a way too... Uh, pillars? Mmm. Pillar, see? Uh, I went through the wrong one. Silly me. I thought the center would be like the center of attention. Yeah, too too many doors, too long to walk from one end to the other. Um, to really be able to tell exactly where you're showing up, I think. Yeah, so the pillars with the exposed wires work up until those three doors in a row. And then if you try and go through the door that's next to the pillar with the exposed sparkity wires, that one on the far right, which would follow the pattern of the rest of them, you just get shunted back out to who knows where. So, it sort of makes sense if you're really paying attention, like I said, paying attention, but then it kind of breaks down here. I don't know. Could have been done better. An okay idea, but too many mazes by this point of the game. Let's try this. Hi, how are you today? <laughs> Surprise! What's behind door number one? Nothing. Door number two, nothing. Door number three, oh, it's the boss! Surprise. Oh, is this where I use the Bow of Truth? Firing like 90 degrees away from him. Okay. Honestly, I am okay with this guy being the final boss. He's the penultimate boss I was talking about in the NES version, but he puts up much more of a fight than Dinah, the central computer core, who you can just... Like I showed you, stand in front of, hold down the barrier button, and boomity boom. Although this battle, yikes, this battle isn't quite as impressive because he doesn't throw the ring of bloober goober at you to turn you into the little slime, slime creature from outer space, to turn you into the little blue slime monster. It doesn't do that. And that was like a key part of this battle because it really keeps you on your toes. Now he's just sort of like Sabera, Carmine, throwing bouncy things around. I am impressed, and the NES version, the, the graphics are a little cleaner here, a little less smudgy pixelated. Uh, very impressed by the, uh, the amount that they were able to pack into this battle. Very complex. You've got all of these different moving parts, the wings, the legs, the chest plate opening up to give you a place that you can actually hit and damage him. All, the lasers flying around? Like, I mean, it was Sprite Flicker. It is Sprite Flicker City in the NES version, but still a really cool idea. And maybe that's why the background is so simple, that there's so much going on here that the developers either didn't want to or simply couldn't pack anything else to distract you into this battle. So, but it's it's a good battle. I like it. But 
Crystallis, the sword, doesn't feel as good of a choice here as the Sword of Thunder, because Sword of Thunder has a broad spread! Projectiles everywhere! Here you have to stand dead center to be able to hit him. You can't stand off to the side a little bit, avoid some of the, the lasers, and... Well, that's kind of a shame. So, I don't know, I... I'm a little disappointed by this battle, but I still like that this is a suitable final boss battle for the game. Synthesizing the ideas in this game and the other game more effectively. Mm. Would've been good. I also dig the music. I mean, it's sort of cacophonous, but it's a suitable final boss battle theme. My, uh, doodle-doodling along is perhaps not so suitable. If you didn't have the foresight, or if you were just having a hard time getting to this point, use up all of your magic rings, any healing mag uh, medical mo 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 moodily herbs, uh, medical herbs. <laughs> Don't walk me to death! If you used up all of your useful utility items, if you've got Stom's Pendant, and if you've got the Psycho Armor, just stand in a corner. Don't, I mean, dodge if you're about to get hit by something. But, <laughs> yeah, take my own advice, why don't I? <laughs> uh, but just sit around. You'll recover a couple hit points from the armor, a couple of magic points from the pendant. This battle does afford you a few openings. Kerblam! Oh, oh, wow. Um, that's kind of gruesome a little bit. Like, lightning bolt through the eye, through the back of his skull, and... Bzzzt. How did you go from Big Dragon Man back into little zappy dude? That is some impressive flame animation. It's like they just cut out a box of flame animation, of a larger flame animation, just cut out a small sliver of that and posted it on there. I'm waving my sword! This is the sword waving time! Maybe he's giving himself a haircut. Okay. The cool, I guess, totally different ending. And the graphics are okay. I mean, it, it looks like somebody drew a nice picture and then converted it to a GIF, a GIF file. Oh well. Do, do, do. You beat the game. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yes, please bring forth the ancient scroll that saith beginning in disguise. Because that's a priceless artifact we've been hanging on to. This music! This is. This is not you beat the game music. This is not suitable! I am using the word suitable too many times. That is unsuitable. But that's sort of the way it's been throughout the whole game. I, the music is fine compared to the NES version. Most of it, if not all of it, just doesn't have the oomph. But some of it's kind of interchangeable. It doesn't really feel like it really belongs any one place. Oh well. So, final analysis time. We beat the game! Huzzah! As a standalone game, Crystallis for the Game Boy Color is pretty solid. It's got a coherent, cohesive plot. Got some interesting ideas, some cool effects, neat weapons, fun enemies, interesting locations. It's pretty good. As a remake or a port of the NES version, it, it does improve on the original in some ways. And sometimes it just changes things for the heck of it without really any sense as to why it was changed. Maybe space limitations on the cartridge. And sometimes it's just not as good. The graphics? are about the same, but there are some nice uh, outside of the cutscenes, which are different. Uh, and I'm not as fond of the cutscene graphics here. But the little touches, the sleds out in front of Nadares, the broken wagon wheel out in the field, they add a little bit more detail, and I like that. The gameplay? Eh, you take away enemy invulnerabilities to certain weapons, and that's half the gameplay gone. That's really one of the defining features of Crystallis, that you have to switch weapons to find the one that works on an enemy, let alone it does enough damage to really be your weapon of choice. The dialogue. 
very different. The same basic plot structure is kind of there, but they've changed some major things. And the way the people talk isn't as memorable. Doesn't really give you that, that sense of dread when you're talking to the people in Chiron about, I don't think we're going to make it. Doesn't give you that sense of quirkiness when you're talking to Kensu. It, it, there are just so many little things that are missing. Just because the dialogue got cleaned up, but had some of the character pulled out of it when things were made to make a little more sense. And that whole subplot with Azteca being in there. I missed that. But it's Chrysalis. Play it twice. The first time is going to take a lot of work for you to overcome the fact that it's not the NES version. The second time, you can kind of start to appreciate it more, I think. I like this game more than I did the first time I played it. But it's done! <laughs> If you enjoyed this playthrough and would like to see some of those version differences I was talking about, be sure to check out Jetty's playthrough of the NES version of Crystallis here on the GameCola YouTube channel, GC.net, assuming this is where you're watching it. Also, be sure to check out the Crystallis D&D cast. That's right, a Dungeons & Dragons podcast taking place in the Crystallis universe. I, as the Dungeon Master, send four noble Game Cola staff writers out, playing as the four wise men, to destroy the floating tower. Along the way, they may or may not accidentally almost burn Portoa to the ground, fall off their dolphins, and destroy an entire ecosystem. It's fun! Lastly, we have a real internet website, www.gamecola.net. Gaming outside the mainstream, or video game humor, or whatever our slogan happens to be at the time you're watching this. Hope you had fun, thank you for watching, and that's it. This ending is really an ending not in disguise.